This video that you're watching right now is probably one of the most controversial videos I've ever made. It applies to any human being on the planet who is currently eating a frugivore diet, a vegan diet, a vegetarian diet, an omnivore diet, a keto diet, or a carnivore diet who's added fruit and honey into their diet in any appreciable amount. This video may make you happy. This video may make you mad. This video may make you sad. But whatever emotion you feel while watching this video, keep in mind that your emotions don't change the facts that I present here. Let's talk about the hidden danger of fruits and honey and what you should know about it and what you can do about it. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with over 20 years of clinical experience. Let's talk about the hidden danger lurking in fruit and honey and how you can understand it. Now, there are several physiological principles that you'll have to understand in order to get at my final nugget of truth at the end of this video. The first thing we need to talk about for a second is glycation. A lot of people know that that's probably a bad thing, but they don't really understand what it is. So glycation is the non-enzymatic sticking of a sugar molecule, a monosaccharide, to either a protein or a lipid. Now, when sugars do this, it gums up the function of your cells and your tissues. Now, there is another thing called glycosylation, which is an enzymatic ATP-driven glycosylation of sticking sugars to cells in a certain way. That's something that your cells actually want to happen, and your body spends ATP on that happening. But glycation is non-enzymatic which means that there's no enzyme required for this reaction. When, when the serum levels of sugar get high enough in your blood, then the, the sugar just sticks to the, to the uh, protein, sticks to the amino acid. That's just how it is, okay? And so anytime your blood sugar levels are high, that's a bad thing. And I think many of you already know that, but it's very important to understand glycation and how negative it is. Now, there's another thing that scientists are learning more about more about every day, which is called advanced glycation end products, which many scientists believe are one of the main culprits in aging in both cellular and tissue and organ dysfunction. So glycation is bad. Now, if you're alive, there's some degree of glycation taking place in every protein and lipid in your body, but as long as it's a very low amount, it appears to be normal and healthy and not a big deal. But if you're having lots of glycation, that is uniformly considered to be a bad thing, both in medical science and in physiological science. Now, the next thing to understand is that there's basically three different kinds of monosaccharides. So when you take a carbohydrate, a starch, or any uh, polysaccharide and you break it down into small enough particles, you're gonna wind up with glucose or fructose or galactose. These are by far the three most common monosaccharides that you can ingest in any version of a human diet. So uh, sucrose is made up of one glucose and one fructose, whereas Lactose is made up of one glucose and one galactose. But in the end, there are just three monosaccharides that are going to be glycating things inside your body. And the final thing that you need to know to understand this video thoroughly is the test that you can have ordered by your doctor and performed in a lab called a hemoglobin A1C. Now, this looks at the amount of glycation that has happened to the hemoglobin inside your red blood cells. This is a very common test. You've probably had it done. If not, you should. And it checks for the amount of glycation in this protein. Now, here's shocking fact number one. Out of the three monosaccharides that I talked about earlier, glucose, fructose, and galactose, did you know that fructose is actually eight to 10 times more glycating than glucose? That's a lot more. That's an order of magnitude more glycating than glucose. 
Uh, also galactose, the simple sugar monosaccharide found in, in milk is also seven to 10 times more glycating than glucose itself. Now this is where fruit and honey come into play because fruit and honey are both rich in fructose, the monosaccharide. Now here's where I must admit an island of ignorance that that uh, resided in my sea of knowledge. And uh, I think this is a useful term because there can be people out there who are very intelligent, very educated, but they're still gonna have little islands of ignorance. And this is one of mine. I just assumed that the hemoglobin A1C test that measured glycated hemoglobin in your blood, I just assumed that that measured all glycation, whether it was from glucose or fructose or galactose. But that's not true. And that's what I found out. And that's what I'm going to share with you in this video. This is why the fructose in fruit and honey is a hidden danger. So you might say, hey, I've had my A1C checked and it was beautiful. And I eat lots of fruit and honey. Ah, my friend, here's the rub. The hemoglobin A1C test only checks for glycation that has been caused by glucose. It does not check for glycation caused by fructose, which is 10 times more glycating. Now, I have suspected this for a while, but I couldn't find any good research on this. And I was talking to my good friend, Bart Kay, about this, and we were looking around, and he actually found some research into how the hemoglobin A1C test was performed, what it actually did at the molecular level. And so it turns out that the hemoglobin A1C test checks for glucose that is stuck to either a valine or lysine, which is an amino acid that make up proteins. That's exactly what the hemoglobin A1C checks for. So you, if you're ingesting lots of fructose, either from fruit or from honey, and obviously I'm, I, I'm including high fructose corn syrup, all the highly processed junk that contains sucrose or added fructose, all this stuff is full of fructose. And it is glycating the hell out of not only your proteins, but remember I said earlier, your lipids as well. The hemoglobin A1C only checks for glucose glycation. It cannot see fructose glycation or galactose glycation. And it also cannot see glycation that happens to your lipids, to the fat molecules in your cells. So when the fructose concentration gets high enough in your portal vein or in your systemic circulation, you are glycating the hell out of your cells and tissues and the proteins and the lipids with fructose but the hemoglobin A1C test is blind to this. And there is currently no test that your doctor can order that looks for fructose glycation. There, there just is no test. Now there is an, an amino assay where they can actually check for fructose adhering to proteins, but it would probably cost you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to have that done. And you'd have to go to a research lab to have it done. Now, after I got over the shame of discovering my island of ignorance, it occurred to me, you know, I bet a lot of other doctors and healthcare providers have this same island of ignorance. They just assume that the hemoglobin A1C test checks for any glycation, not just glycation caused by glucose. And also I wanted to verify, is this really true? Have I have, have Bart K and I stumbled upon something this basic, this fundamental? that's missing a huge amount of glycation in the, the people who watch videos on YouTube and that the hemoglobin A1C test is blind to. Is this really true? And so this one research study where they actually did the research that validated the hemoglobin A1C test, uh, it explains how they did it, but I still was not convinced. And so I actually emailed one of the researchers and said, hey, does the hemoglobin A1C test, does it also check for glycation caused by fructose? And here's his reply. He says, hey Ken, 
Thanks for your question. Diazyme's enzymatic H hemoglobin A1C assay measures the amount of glycated valine at the end terminal of beta cell, beta chain of hemoglobin. The enzyme used in the assay has a much higher specificity and reactivity towards a ketamine group formed between glucose and valine compared with other sugars formed with other amino acid. Hope this answer your, answers your question. Best regards, Chong. And the deeper I dug into this, I found another research study, which is listed down in the show notes below with all the other research that I used to make this video. And the researcher says the pop popular clinical methods used for glucose glycation do not detect the hands product or other fructose mediated adducts. This has compromised research on the potential role of fructose glycation in the pathogenesis of chronic disease in humans. And I found this statement in another study. Fructose has not been a main focus of glycation research because of the difficulty in measuring its adducts. And more importantly, because although it is 10 times more reactive, aka glycating, than glucose, its plasma concentration is only around 1% of that of glucose, unless you're eating a diet filled with fruits and honey. So my friends, I have to give you this stern advice. You cannot use the hemoglobin A1C test as a marker for global glycation. It only checks for glucose glycation. Uh, it does not see any glycation that happens even from glucose with regards to lipids in your bloodstream. It also is completely blind to any glycation caused by fructose, the, the sugar in fruit, or galactose, the sugar in milk. Now, let me ask a favor of you. If you know someone who's eating a diet full of fruit and honey, please consider sharing this video with them because I promise you they have no idea that they are causing rampant glycation to every cell, every protein, every lipid, every tissue in their body. And they really need to know this because it's very important to their overall health and to their longevity.